Welcome back to another episode of Podcast P presented to you by Prize Picks, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original. I got my guys with me, Dallas Rutherford, who is a birthday boy. Thank you, thank you, thank Happy you, birthday, you, thank, you my boy. thank you, thank you, thank you. And Jackie Long, never do you wrong. Come on, okay, you do good. Uh, thank come you, on now. So, Dow, we mentioned it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you, uh, what are we you. turning? 35. Damn. Yep, we're 35? getting old, man. That was the Kevin Hart. going to be Jackie's age here pretty soon. Dang, I don't know. Dang, I got Kevin Hart. Remember when Don I Cheeto. I, 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 I knew the reference. Damn. <laughs> I can't remember. 35. What are we doing? 30. What are we doing for the birthday? Uh, yeah. To be honest, no, no big plans. I think as you continue to get older, it's kind of like a regular day, but thankful for another year and oh, probably just today? probably going to do something Martin, with the shot, wives. Please? You gotta, you gotta, you shot, gotta please, take a Martin? shot. Like, we'll yeah. have a shot on the show. You gotta yeah. do something for your yeah, B-Day. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll discuss after, but I'm, I'm open. Is 35 like a monumental birthday? Like I don't think so. I think 30 and 40 are bigger than 35, so I, I wouldn't consider 35 uh, like something you gotta be. It's not one where you're just at the crib like having a beer, though. Like you, it's, I mean, you know, me and, my, me and wifey might have some plans you know okay, okay. There, there we go there we go all right all I right just bong, bong. being alive making it to whatever age is good so you did it <laughs> okay yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is good it. jackie because you had the the big 40 right come on i did <laughs> all right, I did. All right. I yeah did. the homies is yeah. hey, I, I will say the homies is aging well come on oh, appreciate yeah. that appreciate that i got that. all my teeth <laughs> yeah. Just a heads up, Podcast P fam. We're recording this episode before the Timberwolves, Bulls, Pelicans, and the Hawks game. So stay updated. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all social platforms. And with that being said, it's only right we check in with our guy Tyrese Halliburton over in the Eastern Conference. We'll get right to it after the break. We wanted to take a brief break from this episode to let you know that Price Picks not only makes daily fantasy easy, it makes using responsible gaming tools easy as well. You can set up alerts, limits, timeouts, and more in just a few clicks. When it comes to alerts, it lets you know when you have placed a certain amount of entries, and limits cap the number of entries or deposits you can make during a period of time. Lastly, timeouts are self exclusion allow you to take a break from prize picks for as long as you need. Prize Picks wants their members to have easy access to the resources required to support their fantasy sports experience. Learn more at prizepicks.com slash responsible dash gaming or directly in prize picks first in class member support help center. Jackie, you know what time it is. Cha ching! And make sure you do it responsibly. Now back to the show. The Connect is sponsored by AT&T. Stay connected to what matters most with AT&T. Reese, what up, Brody? How we feeling over there? What's up, fam? I'm good. I'm chilling, bro. How y'all doing? We doing good. We doing good. Just heard y'all in Oklahoma right now, off day. Uh, so you enjoying the beautiful downtown of Oklahoma City? Nah, I worked out this morning. I just been chilling all day. I ain't walked out the hotel. I ain't stepped foot outside. Uh, I got you. I got you. It's a ton of beautiful lakes and ponds and shit out there. You ain't, you ain't trying to. I'll just uh, take your word for it and keep it moving, bro. Okay. Mm. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch my language this episode because pops, he ripped one on me uh, about cursing too much. So I'm a. I'm going to watch what I say on this episode. Your dad? Okay. <laughs> oh, his, his dad. Good. I like, <laughs> I, I, I like your dad already. This is great. When did he tell you that? He told me the summer league. Summer league, and then I was mindful of it, and then he came to me again, I think when we were out there, and he was like, man, you, you're doing better. You're doing better. Not, not so, many, so many cuss words this time. So I'm on the right path. But just to jump right into it, bro, because uh, we don't want to take too much of your time, we want to talk about the season overall. Um, you started off the year. Tremendous, hit the ground running, uh, hell of a first half. You had some highs in, you know, some crazy games. You had uh, the All-Star weekend, which I think one of the best All-Stars that represented their cities during All-Star weekend, which you did when you hosted. I mean, I thought you were phenomenal. You won a ton of awards. You showed the showmanship. I mean, you, you, you just was awesome and you had a blast doing it, which I love the most. Uh, but then you have some lows. You talk about the injuries. You talk about uh, playing through, uh, you know, managing that, you know, when, when you know, they're, they're limiting the minutes and stuff like that and have to find rhythm through that. Give us a mentality going through that and navigating your way through all of that. Yeah, obviously there's, uh, like you said, there's been a lot of highs, a lot of lows. The season's been a lot of fun. 
uh, to learn more about, I think myself and, the, and our group as well. Um, but I think where I'm at right now is just trying to get back to, you know, just being myself, having fun playing. Um, you know, my goal is to be in the playoffs this year. So the biggest thing mm-hmm. is like, Usually at this point in time in the season, I'm like, one more month and we out of here. <laughs> I got to go to the Bahamas or something. Uh, that's yeah. not the way I'm thinking right now. This is the first time that I've ever thought about, like, mentally preparing myself to play more basketball, right? To see my right. homies on vacation and I'm still playing basketball. Like, that's that's the goal for the year, you know? So I'm really <laughs> right. excited about that. I think just trying to get my mind right and uh, us as a group, like how can we, you know, still maintain who we are and finish the season the right way? Because the way that the league is going right now and the East and the West, like you lose two games in a row, you go from mm-hmm. being like the four seed to like the eight seed, like in two games. Like that's how, mm-hmm. that's how crazy it's getting. So for us, it's just trying to take it one game at a time. And me, myself, same thing. Just obviously there's, you know, been a lot for me going on this year and, you know, injury and stuff like that. But I'm just getting through that and, and, and getting ready to, you know, hopefully help lead a team to, to the playoffs and, and, and make some noise. Talk to us a little bit about, because uh, I know you lost one of your closest friends who's been with you throughout your whole career and Buddy Hill. Now he's moved on. He's in Philly. Talk to us a little bit about, like, how that is, the adjustment now, because at one point, you know, that is your comfort zone, someone that you've been around the longest. And now he's gone and now it's like, all right, there's a void there that's missing, obviously, but you know, I still have to be myself. I still have to run the show. Talk to us a little bit about it, about that, the loss of, of Buddy Hill for you. Yeah, it's been weird. It's been weird for sure. I mean, obviously I knew at some point we would we wouldn't be able to play together for for my whole career. Um, but obviously with the trade and and stuff, it's it, it's been different. And I, I think on the court is obvious, right? Without like mm-hmm. he's so prominent in our offense and what we do with a lot of ghost screens and the way that we move and like his presence shooting on the, on the floor, like that opens up mm-hmm. a ton for me. Cause you know, you're not going to be as much in the gap if you're guarding buddy. Cause you know who he is right. as a shooter, you know? So it's been a little different on the court, obviously, but I think off the court has been kind of the, 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 the biggest adjustment for me. Uh, he just has always carried this energy around him. And this, I think like who he is as a person every day, like, not having that energy has just been a little different. Uh, like just even in practice, like coming into practice, you know how it is. And like in February or March, you just lost to, you know, a team you had no business losing to. Now you got to practice to get, now you got two days before a game. Like, I'm like, man, I'm not trying to be in here right now. But like then buddy mm-hmm. come up to me and he's screaming in the, in the gym. And now he's, now he's like, Oh, the bench going to bust the starter's ass today. It's like, all right, bet uh, I got to lace him up. Like I'm right, not losing right, to right. buddy today. Like <laughs> that's a, uh, that being gone is a little different, but I think that 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 kind of comes, you know, with the territory. And that was just for me about finding ways to to manufacture energy sometimes. You know, I think we all have to do that as as human beings and as as mm-hmm. leaders, right? You gotta find a way to bring some energy even on the days where, you know, you don't have it. And and that's kind of a big part of it. But that's it's a little different now because the days that I didn't have it or didn't was having a bad day, didn't bring it or something. I could always count on Buddy to bring it and get on me to be better, you know? And now with that gone, mm-hmm. uh, just having to learn to adjust to that. It's been interesting, but I'm figuring it out. And uh, he's doing good in Philly. I'm doing good here. Uh, we knew we weren't going to play together forever. Hopefully we can uh, – we're done playing them for the year, unfortunately. So hopefully we can, like, play them in the offs or something because I, mm-hmm. I, I want to play against Buddy more than anything. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. I want to follow up just because you you brought up All Star and we were down there. But Tyrese, it felt like you hit like six or seven threes in like thirty seconds to start the game, and then it. I don't know if they were icing you. Were they hating a little bit, not giving you the ball a little <laughs> bit more? Because I thought you were going to go for like forty or fifty. Great story in Indiana. Were they hating a little bit, or were you just kind of yeah, like, all right, I, I got mine in? I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Uh, I was I was going to the game like, man, I'm really not trying to be out here like that. Like it's at the crib, so you know, I, and like I'm, I was trying to make some shots and get out of here, try to elbow pass or something and keep it moving. But then like I, I couldn't miss. Like I don't know, it was just one of them days. So I was like, all right, maybe I will try to go for MVP. And then Dave started making shots, and it was like, ah, oh, like he he whoever just makes the most shots between us probably is gonna get it. Uh, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Maybe they were icing me. Maybe they weren't. But uh, <laughs> hopefully I got a lot more All-Star games to, to, to try to win one. But, yeah, no, nah, I, I ain't made a shot since the All-Star game. So trying <laughs> try to figure that out yeah. at this point. Funny enough, that game, we were like 
we felt good about it, right? Wes felt good in our locker room. We like, before we go out there, like, all right, fellas, let's go win this one. Like, let's go get it. And then we saw y'all, you went on a three-point flurry. Dame started off hot. And then we was like, all right, yeah, it, it's, it's getting out of hand early. Like, so it, 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 y'all shifted, definitely shifted the, the landscape of that game, the way you came out, the way Dame came out. So, yeah, I was pretty tight about that. Pretty tight about that. Tight yeah, about no, that. we couldn't we couldn't miss. And then and then JB started making shots. We couldn't we couldn't mm-hmm. miss. And we we just made mm-hmm. we just made so many shots. That's that's the interesting part though. It's like when is the game is the game ever gonna get back to being like, like we talked about in the locker room? Like when is it gonna get back to being serious? I wonder. I mean, I mm-hmm. feel like I got I got I got probably more to do with that because I'm a younger guy. But mm-hmm. uh, that's the interesting part is when is it gonna get back to being like like really like serious? I don't. I don't know when we'll get there, if we'll, if we'll ever get there. I had an idea of like, all right, say fourth quarter, defense scores points. Like how, like you think that changes the All-Star game? <laughs> like you in think? what way? Like like you're saying like, like a deflection? Stops. Oh, like stops? That's the most PG that's quote I think I've idea. ever heard. That's the most <laughs> I'm, I'm saying though, like, all right, or what about because then, because then defense. our offensively <laughs> guys won't go as hard then, right, if offense doesn't count. So like what if defense is double points like so if you shoot a three if you get the stop it's six points for the defense or for the other team <laughs> it's gonna be i'm not rolling uh, i think that a couple things layups should shouldn't count. count layups layups shouldn't count you have to dunk it or shoot a three or a mid-range or whatever but layups don't count if, if we're playing like that because yeah nobody's nobody's even there's their sleep when you shoot a layup or there's got to be like nine guys or eight guys back. And you're going to have to well, What hit. about you get scored on? You get subbed out. <laughs> but p- dudes don't want to be there. You're going to have to put, <laughs> right, you gonna to put, <laughs> have to put more time on the oh, shot clock, though. Okay, okay. Question, for so sure. you got to walk us through this play. You guys are playing the Timberwolves the other day, and you get the ball, and you outlet it to your teammate, Aaron Neesmith, and he's driving to the basket, and it looks like he has a game-tying layup, but then Anthony Edwards just comes out of uh, nowhere – Probably one of the craziest blocks we've seen in a long time. On on TV, it looked crazy, but walk us through that play. What was it like in person? And like, what were you guys thinking when you saw him go up and hit his head on the rim while blocking the shot with his left hand? You know, I never, I didn't even notice he hit his head on the rim until after when we got to the locker room. I mean, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the whole fourth quarter, like, I think he had like sixteen in the fourth, and he was making some crazy shots. Um, and that's what he does. But, you know, sometimes like when somebody's shooting c- certain shots in the fourth quarter in a close game, when they shoot it, when they let it go, you're like, yes, like I know that's not going in. Like there's no way. It was like every time mm-hmm. I did that and was making it every time. And then that block was unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's crazy. I don't even know. Like after the game, you're like, because I made the pass. I'm like, should I have kept it? Should I have thrown it to the left instead of the right? It's like, nah, like and just made a ridiculous play like what can we what can we really do about that it was uh mm-hmm. it was insane and I was sick the next day because then he played against Cleveland and he had like zero points in the fourth and overtime and I'm like it works like this every <laughs> single time bro every time yeah yeah I I personally thought like the block Anthony did was amazing but it it wasn't a foul on Ant it, it should have been called on McDaniels I thought McDaniels like took Neesmith out like I thought that play uh, was wild Neesmith right there's a lot I thought going Neesmith on. took uh uh or uh McDaniels took Neesmith out, but the the block was was by Anthony Edwards was clean. It that that was beautiful. Like his athleticism is off the charts. But I, I, I they could have called the foul on that. Look, uh, I want to talk about the playoffs, the playoffs, man. I know it's uh, been a real tight race going on to close the season off, but y'all Pacers are making the playoffs again. And y'all haven't been to the to the playoffs what, since the, uh, the bubble last time, right? And that's been a long, long time. But that's not the only thing going on for the first time, Tyrese. It's your first time going to the playoffs, baby. I didn't even know that until today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I want to know, have you even thought about that moment being your first time playing in the playoffs, man? Nah, yeah, it's all I think about. It's all I think about. I'm so excited <laughs> for it. Uh, like it's hard not, you know, because the the race between four and eight is so close. Like for me, I, I think everybody in that, in that wants to avoid the play and nobody wants to be in the play and have to play extra games if you don't have to. So like, it's hard for me not to like think so much about the playoffs because 
I got to take care of what's in front of me every day. Like, like we talked about, like one or two bad losses could like completely put you, you know, solidified in the eight seed. And you can't like assume that you're going to get help. Like the, every time that we expect a team to like, like, okay, maybe they should lose tonight. They end up winning. And then it's like, mm. you just got to stop worrying about the help that you could get or couldn't get and worry about yourself and just kind of be like, live in the moment. And uh, yeah, but I, I, I'm super excited for it. I feel like, uh, you know, it'll be interesting because of how fast we play. I'm excited to see how that translates to the playoffs because the playoffs is more slow and, you know, methodical and understanding all tendencies and all that stuff. So I'm really excited to see how that, how that translates. And, you know, hopefully if we get there, like who we're matching up with, because it could be, you know, the way that it's moving around. I mean, it could be anybody in that four to eight race. It could be Cleveland. It could be Milwaukee. It could be a, a lot of different teams. So that's really exciting for me. And I just wanted to play in high stakes basketball. I mean, obviously the in season tournament run was cool, but like the playoffs is what everybody wants to be a part of. You want to, you know, compete for Larry right. and Ryan. So I'm really excited for it. And uh, just looking forward to seeing like how our team translates, how my game translates, um, seeing, you know, how, how, how the cookie crumbles. You mentioned in an interview that teams are starting to guard you a little differently now, right? A little more face guarding probably adding a little more physicality um, and denying you the ball. Obviously, you're the head of the snake. So trying to get the ball out of your hands is probably the, like, game plan going into that night, right? So, like, what are some of the strangest coverages that you've seen up until the season so far? Yeah, there's been some interesting stuff. Um, I would say up until, like, up until, like, the Lakers game in the tournament, everybody was kind of guarding me the same way. Like everybody was mainly in a, you know, up to touch or at, or dropping, uh, like semi deny, but not really. I mean, just knowing that I'm kind of the focal point. And then after mm-hmm. at the Laker game, then everybody started to blitz all my ball screens. Um, and that took a little bit of an adjustment, but I feel like I figured that out, like understanding getting off the ball early, playing more through pitches than having to come off ball screens every time. And like becoming a screener myself, I've never – I've never set screen. So like me trying to understand like how I can be better <laughs> there too. Uh, yeah. But I, I think now it's interesting because like it's just adjusted so much and I'm just seeing so much different coverages because now I feel like teams won't blitz me anymore because I feel like I've like figured it out where it's a lot more like traditionally teams have put like taller, longer dudes on me to like bother my jumper and stuff like that. I feel like it's adjusting a little bit more to put in like a quicker, a quicker, like more endurance guy to pick me up full court. So like sometimes when I'm tired, I'm like, you know, I'm not trying to bring this up, like take it up. You know what I mean? And then the minute I give it up, it's like a full, (laughs) it's a full denial, like kind of like they're on, they're playing on my top side, sending everything down. And then that's when I really have to become a screener. I think that part of my struggles have been, I've just been, conceding to these den- denials like so easily and then mm-hmm. kind of like you know you see there's some players in the league who do it when they're getting denied they're just like y'all do it like y'all take care of mm-hmm. it four on four you know like i mm-hmm. i've kind of had to get back to like chasing the ball a little bit but like mm-hmm. in an unselfish way if that makes sense like because mm-hmm. when you hear chasing the ball you just think like somebody's going gee they're not passing like no, no, I'm trying to chase the ball to kind of put teams in different, you know, uh, coverages. Then we can get to our action and stuff like that. So that's kind of been the mm-hmm. biggest adjustment for me is like just kind of learning how to play off the ball a little bit more. Like when I played with with Fox, like I didn't necessarily play off the ball. Like it wasn't like sets were being run for me off the ball. I was just spotting up off the ball. But it wasn't like I had to like come off pin downs and screen for somebody to, you know, like it's it's a complete completely different, especially without Buddy and uh, me having to adjust to that role. So it's been really interesting uh, to kind of like learn more about myself and like change change my workouts a little bit more. I feel like for mm-hmm. the majority of the year, my workouts have just been pick and roll, handling an ISO, you know, getting to my, getting the shots. And now it's like, I'm like setting screens, working on pin down shooting. Like I've never done that before. So that that's kind of been the interesting part with the, with our new group. Right. Essentially you letting the, the defense off the hook by not going to get the ball is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, because when you think like chase the ball, I'm like, well, I don't want to get in guys' way. But there's like different ways for me to like chase the ball to get downhill. Like, if you're chasing the ball to reset, then we're slowing down, and that's where we're not at our best. But if I'm chasing the ball by setting by setting like cross screens and like uh, setting screens for Pascal when he has the ball and different stuff like that, we get better stuff. Like, it's like so interesting. I was talking to somebody about this. Like, 
the minute that I started, you would think like by being super unselfish. So by me not bringing up all the time that like my assists would go like up, but Mm -hmm. it's Mm -hmm. like completely the other way. Like by me being so unselfish to be like, y'all handle it four on four, just every points, assists, everything goes down. Like it it all Mm -hmm. goes down because I don't have the ball. You know what I mean? So that's kind of been the interesting part. It's like counterintuitive a little bit, but you know, figuring it out. Got you. I I do want to ask because you're such a dual threat with playmaking and scoring. When it, when the game is going, like at what point does one click in more than the other? Like, is it teams? Is it schemes? Is it feel? Is it it's time? Like, at what point is it like? All right, Reese, I, you got to be a scorer right now. Yeah, I think. Uh... Like I, during the flow of the game, right? I don't necessarily think about that. I'm just like thinking, how do I make the right basketball play right now? You know, it, mm-hmm. it feels like I've been on a, this is what it's been all year for me. Going to halftime, I'm two for six. I got 10 assists and we're down five. And then they come up to me and they show me the stat sheet and they're like six shots. This isn't enough. <laughs> and then I go in the third quarter and I shoot, I shoot, shoot, shoot. And then like it balances out, you know, like, cause I'm like, I gotta be more aggressive. So like I would say like, mm-hmm. if I, I don't know for sure, but I feel like if you look at my numbers, a third and the fourth would be where I get the majority of my points. And I've been trying to like find a way to adjust that mentality. And because like, I remember Tyrese Maxey said it to me uh, last season, like I went into halftime with like 10 assists, probably like five points and we're coming out of halftime and I'm wiping off my shoes and Tyrese comes and guards me full court and he's like, all right, time to play defense now. Like you're actually going to score. And I'm like, people actually think that about me. Like I didn't, I didn't <laughs> like, know that I did that. He was the first person to point it out to me. And uh, yeah. I think it's, it's not on purpose. It's just the flow of the game and trying to find the right way to like, I think every game is a battle of those, of those balances. I talk to like Sue Bird about it all the time because she's somebody who had to do it too. And there's not many people have to like do both and like, have like figured out how to do it both at a high level. And uh, so just trying to find the, the the right way between the two, because there's times, like I said, by me being too unselfish, it's like selfish to our team because now teams aren't guarding me the same way. Guys aren't getting the same looks. Like just trying to find that balance is always like, it's the, it's my biggest battle. It's a, it's a battle every game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to, I want to ask him just because Tyrese, I don't know if you've heard P say this on a previous episode, but now that you're kind of having to learn, uh, how to move without the ball in your hands. How comfortable are you with backdoor cutting? Because Pete's talked about it before, which I think is funny, but every time he does backdoor, he uh, he makes a great play or something, you know, goes well. So I think he's better at it than what he thinks. But for you, have you had any like, you know, little backdoor cuts and getting some easy baskets now that these guys are face guarding you or getting you off the ball a little more? A little bit, a little bit like, uh, but I think that all that is like based on like the speed of your cut too. And we actually talked about it on my first time on this podcast when people was like, okay. I suck at backdooring. And I was like, you're a 360 game, whatever. <laughs> uh, but I think that it's all set up by like how good of a screen setter you are too. Like I think why Steph is, Steph gets so many backdoors a game because of how good of a screen setter he is and like how honest you have to be to play on his top side. Obviously it mm-hmm. also goes as to like, how good of a shooter he is at the same time. But I feel like to get, I feel like my back doors are not going to come from me being in the corner. Like that's not how my back doors come. I feel like my back doors will come from screening and slipping uh, or like, you know, like back screens, slipping, like stuff like that. It's a little different. Mm -hmm. I feel like, uh, but maybe I'm tripping. I probably got like one back door layup all season. (laughs) It's not easy, bro. (laughs) It's not easy. I mean, watching like Steph and those guys and like, I'm like, why do they bite so hard on them coming off? I feel like I'd be doing the same thing and they don't ever bite. Like yeah. everybody just knows what I'm doing. I don't know. No, I, I I feel you. I could be on the bench watching the game and somebody that subbed in for me will get a back door and I'm like, how did he do it? Like, why is <laughs> yeah. that so easy and so simple? Like, that could have been me. I had only asked that question about the dual threat of you being a playmaker and a scorer because of you obviously play for Coach Carlisle, who's been notorious of being a little harder on his point guard and that relationship there. I know we had dinner not too long ago and you talked about how comfortable he's made you and, and how good you feel at that point guard position under his coaching. Talk to us a little bit about, or, or the, the, the public about um, just how much he's elevated your game and allowed you to, to kind of 
do a little bit of everything and run the show and, and you know, call the plays. Yeah, he gives me, like, the, the utmost freedom, like, all the time. Like, I can't – there's probably, like, five or six instances a game where we're at the free throw line and he calls something – and I'll just be like, we're not running that. Like, and he'll be like, okay, go ahead. You know, like he has mm-hmm. the utmost trust in me to to wave his calls off and, uh, you know, just be honest and have honest dialogue. Like, I feel like the best possible way for a coach and a player to have a relationship is just like honesty and accountability. And I feel like I have that with, with Coach Carlisle. Like I've obviously been struggling a little bit lately. Like he calls me to his hotel room, like not just to like, not to like cuss me out or anything, but – just like mm-hmm. obviously tell me how I need to be better and like problem solve with me to figure that out versus, you know, trying to, I hate, you know, you got to hate when like people like think they have all the answers. Like he's just trying to like help me through that by speaking about how I can be better there um, and what, what makes the most sense. And I, I feel like just our, our honest relationship helps everything work because when coaches like lie to you or they think they got all the answers when, we both know that they don't, it never works. Like I just, all I ask for is like honesty and like, he just holds me accountable at all times. Like we watch a lot of film together on the plane or something. He might call me to the back. We'll go through some offensive sets that, you know, he likes or talk about what I like in in certain sets. And then we'll watch like a lot of my film. And like, honestly, because offensively, of course, I'm going to watch my offensive film all the time. Like overwatch it. Mm-hmm. It's more like, how can I be better defensively? How can I be in the right spots? Just like more, I think offensively, I'm such like a, you know, tell everybody where to go and like use my IQ on that end. But this year has just been about a lot more figuring out how can I do that on the defensive end as well uh, to kind of make mm-hmm. up for the things that I don't do well on the defensive end. Just knowing schemes and locking more into like the advanced scout and stuff like that. He's just held me up, you know, accountable in all those in all those facets. Love that. Love that. Before we cut, I, I do have one more question. You guys did bring over Pascal. Um, before we wrap, just talk a little bit about how much Pascal has helped your play and helped you guys because um, he's been playing phenomenal. It, feel, it feels like he's – it's crazy. I feel like Pascal's been there <laughs> his whole <laughs> career. Like he just came in and he just like – it was just like you just dropped him and he just started performing the same way he performed in Toronto. So I think a lot has to do with you, with you making him comfortable and, and playing the style of basketball that you guys are playing. But just talk to us a little bit about how much Pascal has helped you guys. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's been, it's been good. Um, trying to like kind of learn on the fly, like from the minute he got here, when we had, I I was obviously still hurt. And then I came back the game he got here and I got re-hurt. So just kind of having to figure that out. I was on a minutes restriction. So our minutes together weren't, you know, super heavy. It's just like, it's been like a fun process of just trying to figure out everything, uh, what makes the most sense and, how we play and, you know, still being myself, because I'm sure like you can relate, like going to OKC the first time, like learning how to play with Russ, like it took, it took some time, like learning how to play with like another guy. You know what I mean? Like that, mm-hmm. that that's how I look right. at it. It's like me, it's like, how do I play with him? Like play the right way. Like he screened for me, I screened for him. He can still get his looks. I still get mine. Just trying to balance between those two has been interesting. But I think like the best part is like P is such a good dude that like, I feel like our dialogue has always been open from the minute he got here. We met in Portland uh, in like the lunchroom. We just talked about like expectations between us two and uh, how we can help each other. And like, he's pulled me aside so many times in the locker room. Like, you know, I need you to shoot more. Like we're going to get to the playoff teams are going to, you know, guard us a little different. You're going to be expected to take more shots. Like get them out now. Like understand, like you're going to go, your, your, your shots are going to jump up when the playoffs start. Cause you're going to be held more accountable to do that, you know? And uh, mm-hmm. it's just been good because he's, you know, he's played in big playoff games. He's won a championship. And so just kind of learning from him has been, has been good as well. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a partnership that's that's ever growing and uh, curious to see how it looks at the end of the year. But yeah, I'm excited. It, it, it works really well. I feel like we flow off each other well. Love that. Love that. Well, we appreciate you, Tyrese. We don't want to take any more of your time. Thanks for your insight and your outlook, bro. We want to Wish you uh, uh, a healthy finish to this season, and uh, we'll definitely see you soon, bro. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys having me. Stay close to the action with AT&T at home or on the go. AT&T keeps you connected to the game you love. Fellas, before we wrap, we got to check in with our Podcast P family. Always. You know, they send some, some, you know, Postman P questions. 
So Dow, go ahead and uh, what, what we got? What's the first question? Okay, on okay. P? So the the first Postman P question of the day it comes from Daniel Ewing's burner. Love it, burner account. Burner account. And he asked, P, I recently rewatched your twenty five point fourth quarter versus Brooklyn when you were in OKC, and it had me thinking. How do you approach scoring game to game? Is it a flow or is it more strategic where you try to get points per quarter like MJ and Shaq have talked about? I like it. Good question. Good question, Daniel Ewing, Ewing Burner. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, game to game is kind of just a flow. Um, I always have a mindset going into the game to, to try to go dominate both ends, try to be aggressive when I have the ball and definitely look for opportunities to, to be aggressive. I think when it relates to that OKC game, that fourth quarter, it just, I don't know. I know recently Bron talked about it, the game against us where he came back that second half, he was phenomenal. But it's just a zone you go into and uh, it literally feels like you cannot miss anything you throw up. It feels like the game is slowed down. It feels like the hoop is that much bigger. It feels like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of equivalent to like on video games where you get a power up and you're just moving and doing things way better than your opponent. And that's kind of just how I can best describe what those, you know, scoring explosions look like or feel like. But on a game to game basis, it's, it's kind of just having that mentality to go out and just be aggressive and, you know, um, you know, just put pressure on, on the defense any chance you can. Do you think that there's guys, just follow up with that, do you think that there's guys that do approach the game like that? Because that answer, like, you know, I feel like most people today do say that. It's like with the flow of the game, like I'm not really, yes, I need to be aggressive. But like, I remember MJ and Shaq talking about like, I think it was in MJ's book, like, yeah, to score 32, I just ate, eight, 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 you know, a mm -hmm. couple free throws and so forth. Do you think there's guys in the league that do look at that like on a quarter to quarter basis? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I know there's guys in the league that look at like if I can get 10 free throws, I know I'll at least have 20 to 25 points. And so there's there's guys that definitely look at it that way. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, five points a corner, I got 20. Um, I won't, you know, say names, but there are guys that look at it that way. Next question comes from Kyle Cap, and he wants to know what record is more likely to be broken? Is it Wilt? 100 point game or LeBron's 40,000 points. What y'all think, fellas? Mm. Ah, the 100 points. Really? Yeah. Both are difficult, I feel like. Both are but difficult. But 40,000, bro. Points in a game or 40,000 points. Career points? Like, think about it. You got to be, I think I saw like a stat or something like that. In order to break that, you got to play 20 years, average, something. average 30. <laughs> and like play minimum like 70, 60 or 70 games a season. That's very hard to do. LeBron came out of high school, right? Came out of high school. I'm, and he been in the So that alone, now. it takes That's, someone yeah. to start their career on fire, right? Yeah, he been on fire ever since. Ever since. It Damn. takes someone to start their career on fire and then it takes them, you have to have the longevity to do that every year. And he got a lot of seasons where straight. he wasn't even really hurt. A lot of seasons a lot of where seasons. he didn't sit out. Right. He's he been played very every game. Blessed. I wouldn't say yeah. lucky, blessed and and because he, he takes Take care, care of his body. body. He pay a lot of money to do it. He shoot. Yeah. I mean I think for that's you tough. that much money for your body, I think you should have forty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> it's I don't paying know. off. I I I'd be curious if there was a stat P on like longevity or average tensures in the NBA from like the 80s, the 90s, mm -hmm. and how much like modern medicine and, and different, you know, accessibility to things. Mm -hmm. Like, cause you never know, like what if in 10, 15 years, there's some new, you know, procedure, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, where guys can have a higher chance at that longevity. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's just a crazy, it, that, that is, you know what I mean? That, maybe maybe the that's longevity will get easier as, modern medicine progresses but a hundred both are difficult both I, are I mean, difficult yeah Probably i, I, the 40 would, I wouldn't point. say that to me the hundred is not that difficult <laughs> just because the 25 way 25 a quarter exactly and just the way that this, <laughs> but i'm saying just the way this game is played now and say for instance stephen curry yeah if one day before he out and he's done and he's like just going i want to try it yeah he probably could do it for sure that's a record that man can break 
I don't care what you say. I, that's one man who I think. And second, maybe second, I would say Dame Dollar. You know, but first, for sure, Stephen Curry can do that. He can definitely do so. that. I don't think so. That's, oh, that's and they cha- and say for instance, he, they changed I mean, the he, rules. I, I would say uh, technically he could. Like, he could definitely go for it. But it's it just – it's. Let him it's, it's, easier, it's easier if you're picking out of two, it's easier to get 100 yeah. in a game than I agree. 40K in a career. I'm just saying. Because if he, I mean, dudes, you think about now, dudes have been scoring in the close, 70s. Close to yeah. it, yeah. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I just want to know what that looked like. Like, was that front end heavy? Like, did he start the game off with like 70 or 60 in the first half and then they started doubling them? And, or like, was it a late surge where he just went crazy? I think they came out with video. Wasn't there like some recreation of the video footage? Then they like rendered it to 4K of that. Or no one was there. That was a game no one saw. The people always say they don't know if it's true or if it's false. Did Wilt actually score 100 points? And I'm I must say just because of the 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 year that he played in, wasn't nobody as big as him, and wasn't nobody as good as him. It was like he was playing with ants. Yeah. And I would say it was easy work. Bop, bop. Easy yeah. hunting every yeah. night. Have there been a lot of people that came out and was like, yeah, I was at that game. I don't, I've never heard anybody say <laughs> I've never say heard that. nobody say, yeah, that's I was there. I've seen it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Never, like, not even in a movie. Right. Yeah. Maybe you made a joke about it. Never. Right. He that's, had to have, though. You don't bring a piece of paper out and something like that. Just whole thing it. was a gimmick. Like, he, he scored that's, that's that part I don't, I don't, I wouldn't get why would they lie about what it that's either. that's photoshopped? What if it is photo? They weren't photoshopping. They weren't photoshopping back then. Well, now, back now, then. Now that honey does look a little. It's a it, little iffy. <laughs> like I say, I, I would say in his time period when he was playing, I can say it could have happened because he was so dominant. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. literally, nobody could yeah. guard him. It was like just give me, just give with the ball. He got it. With yeah. the ball, got it. Got I it. Could see it, it was happening. so easy. I could see it happening just because of that time period and how how dominant he was. But like, here's let's the, see the stats here's right here. Game right here. Yeah. So he. <laughs> 63. He field shot goal 63 attempts. attempts. 28 for 32 from the free throw line. Was he a good free he throw was shooter? Cat. I mean, he, he was good he that was day. Good that day. Shit. No 28 assists. Reba- 25 oh, rebounds. Two assists. He had two assists. So he could have had 104. Hey, two wow. fouls. I <laughs> could have had 104. <laughs> yeah, I don't I know, think man. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. Shit, That's a lot of shots because you think about the free throws too. Like, he shot 63 times, but. 32 free throw attempts. Like that's Okay, can I ask this? That's another 15 shots. What was the length of the the court back then? It's still same, 90. Same, it's still same yeah, yeah. Okay. And how the same the uh uh the uh, rims, everything height of the rims and all that. Everything same? everything was the same. There's just no three-point line, I'm assuming. Okay. Right? I'm just no going to say he line. was dominant down there. That's it. And he played that's impressive. All 48 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, he played the whole game. Okay, well, it was, what's the... How old they was had he? to have How won by... How old was he this game? They, they yeah, had what to have won by two. What was the final score of this game? <laughs> was it a dub? What, what, what was his blowout? What was his <laughs> end? Like, who did they age? play against? They won by 30. They won by 22. And who like, was on that Knicks team? Ah, oh, shit the fuck. They were. Oh, so they, uh, so they, they didn't even play. They, they played in the small they gym. through the life. The auxiliary gym. The auxiliary gym. They ugly. Nobody got proof from it. The cafeteria gym. Come on, Will. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, Some I don't want to go against score the grain. tables people. Like, oh, it must have gone to Will. What that's, was it? That's what just. Like? That's just like even the scores table people. Like, did they all die? Like, yeah. Like that's why I'm curious. Who was on the Knicks? Is anyone still? I, you just that's that was the only thing that could like sell me on it. Like there was people like, yeah, I was actually at that game because it wasn't that long ago. Do y'all so know? His, do y'all know his age at that when he did that? <laughs> when he ate. I'm trying to think if he, you know, There's injuries. just so many mysterious scores. Look at the, score. Look at the total score, 169 to 147. Damn, who was, everybody was balling on, <laughs> it was, someone, someone right. And they talk about our era is too easy, like, there's no, <laughs> there's no three-pointers. Yeah, there's no three-pointers. That was, that was They've a been trying to work on this for a game. long time. <laughs> yeah. There was no three-pointers. 25. He was 25 at the time. So I give him that. I would say he was probably very athletic. But then again, there's, like, he's had games of 70s, multiple games of 70s. He's had 60-point games, like. And that was one yeah. game he just said, I'm getting 100 today. One game, and again, when you saw Kobe he get, feeding him. It, you, he probably could have got more, you know yeah. what I mean? I think, yep. I think. I'm going, I think it's I'm going with Will got the 100. He got it. Going, uh, we got to. We got to believe it. I'm going with Will. That, we he got, got to believe that's it. That's history in his, in, his, in his name, man. 
We got to believe that. it. I'm, I'm rolling. I would love to see it and, and just have the confirmation, but I'm rolling. You know what I like about the most? It give everybody motivation to beat it. It do. It do. Come on, it's we'll entertainment. You. At the end of the day, it's entertainment for the league. Exactly. Come on, man. Next question comes from what? Wood up, pop. Ha ha. We gonna get back to you, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we gonna still ask your question. They want to know: Is there something specific you would want to adopt from European FIBA basketball to USA basketball? Yeah, I think there's a lot of cool and interesting things that go on in in the Euro FIBA leagues. Uh, for one, like, have you seen like their their game atmospheres? Like. Mm -hmm. My wife, Danielle, is obviously Serbian, so like she showed me some of the partisan and uh, uh, red something, red, I wanna say it's like red, red star. She showed me the rivalry game between those two and they play like outside and it's like smoking fire. fire and it's theme songs and chants and like that should be dope if that was here in the US, it's you know like what I mean? Gladiator. Yeah, it's there. like you really like, and then I was, when I was there, they was telling me like, it's really like on some gang type shit. Like what side you on? Like what team you rep? Like, and it's it's ramifications behind that. If you get caught from what I was told, like it's 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 that deep. Um, and so that'd be dope. Like not the violence and not that part of it, but just how the games are. Um, I remember we played the FIBA games when we're playing other countries. They're waving their flags in the stands and they're singing like their countryside songs and it was just like, yo, this is dope. Like, you know, you, you really like, they really embrace where they're from and their culture. So I, I think that'd, 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 that'd be dope. Like if that was part of the game. I would definitely think it'd be dope. Smoking I can see you in there out. like doing your chants in the songs and the, you know, going crazy in the stands. The, the only you thing, do that now. The only thing it'd be bad is when you lose after you and did all that shit. <laughs> you have, you, at least you have fun though. You did. You, you have did. fun though. I would you definitely say that because I know I come out singing and doing all the shit that they do. Yeah. Sure to be off and all that. Cause it's, ooh, 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 we got to break down though. Like what are the actual difference of rules? You have the goaltending. That's one goal that tending. I know because we have been talking about the offensive and defensive side and all those European players say it's easier to score in the NBA, in the NBA. than it is back where they're from. So yeah. what, what other rules really are there besides the goaltending? Is there three in the key? I think you can stay in the key longer. I think uh, that's one. I think, yeah, you can stay in the key a little longer. Dude, Obviously the goaltending. The goaltending would be crazy um, in the NBA. I know they call, like it's, it's a certain step you can't do. Like you have to put the ball down before you, you actually take a step <laughs> mm -hmm. in FIBA basketball opposed to U.S. You can catch, and, catch, catch it and catch go, and go. At, yeah, and dribble as you're going. <laughs> yeah, outside of that, it's not really any big differences, but physicality. Physicality is different. They're they're way more physical, I think, in Euro leagues. But I don't like if we had that goaltending rule. No I one think scoring. Nobody like our league is too athletic. Yeah. Like it's too. LeBron, our league is too athletic. LeBron's for, still doing them. That right. was the case. Right, you, yeah, know you know talk about his chase down block. Yeah, like. that, he have a thousand <laughs> points right now. Hey, 40,000 shit. I, yeah, you start racking 50, up the points he took away. Man. He got to be at 10,000 points that he he denied. I'm trying to think, what else? The, heck could they, the, the, the goaltending, you said what, they get more time in the key? Like there's no defensive three seconds? No, nah, I think because they have, the, the lane is actually bigger. It's like a, it's, instead, yeah, it's like a trapezoid. So the, the lane is actually a little bigger. I wonder if there are any other rules. Though, the charge circle I'm... is different. What they deem as charge is different than in the NBA. You got to be like outside the circle. Is the same amount of uh, rosters? I mean, players on the same. Uh, I think so. Less technicals. I know that we're seeing guys get yeah, body yeah, slammed yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> There's they, some they fight wild. Man. And they and wait okay. and they said so that three is shorter than the NBA. It's easier. And to they score said in that it's easier to score in the NBA. Come on, man. NBA but you got well, to do. But you got to think about Shit. it. Our game is is more ISO and over there is you know they're not letting you hold the ball in in ISO. It's a lot of um, ball movement. It's a lot of player movement. It's like they actually run an offense over there. So they rules just offense. make a difference. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, yeah. Like, like they really game. fundamental in how they play whereas over here it's it's ISO. You can get a shot up in two seconds if you want to. Like yeah, you know, yeah. so it's really an offensive or isolation heavy league that we have. Like like Dame Dollar all, all the time. Ooh, yeah, all the time. The FIBA court's two feet smaller. Okay, 
So you have that quarter smaller. Like vertically or horizontally, if that makes sense. Like what where's the the so it's vertically. It's, yeah, two it'd be feet different short. if it so was shorter. If the sidelines were two feet and that'd be Pause more difficult. Before I say what I say, do they play with a bigger ball or smaller ball? <laughs> Okay. Ball's the same monkey. I said that's good. That was good. No, no, you cleared, that. cleared that up for us for yeah. sure. So, yeah, there's some there's some differences, but okay. for me, it, it, the takeaway is is like if we can have the environments that they play in, that should be that dope. would be dope. Of that should be dope. Y'all get to come up with some real. When we played in the FIBA, like it was like they were hitting. Like there there was no freedom of movement. Like if you come across that paint, they chucking you. You know what I mean? Like almost to the point where it was like, nah, bro, we got to fight. Like, what, what you doing? Like, I remember who hit me. And we, and it was dudes that I was cool with in the NBA. It, <laughs> it want to say it was, and to this day, like after he did this, I was like, all right, it's smoke every time I see Patty Mills. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we played Australia and they was, Australia's, like that team, they, they dirty. Like he Australia did, was dirty. He did a Kobe. Like he did, to the <laughs> man. Song. He he did something where <laughs> I'm just running, like running to get back on offense, and I'm just running to fill the mm-hmm. corner, and he just like right in my chest, like I'm like, this is like, different. Like, we ain't cool, <laughs> we ain't cool, hey, bro, wait, hey, hold on. <laughs> like what? Like it did ever ever from that point on. Like I'm a person that I, I'm gonna get my revenge. So like you after bet. at that point, every time I saw him, I'm. I'm Petty hitting it. Pit. I'm hitting them. So at, at that point, I was like, "Yo, this shit is different over here." Like, and 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 it wasn't that I wasn't. I, I like the physicality, but it just it caught me by surprise because those same dudes in particular, they wasn't doing that in the league. So now we playing over here, and this is their game. This is how they play. Um, but the physic, yeah, the physicality is definitely different. Like even like fast break situations, like that take foul shit. Nah, over there, like that's your chance to like line somebody up. Ooh. Like it ain't it ain't no <laughs> transition. It ain't no flagrant. Like nah, you get a fast break. Like they gonna put you on your ass. You gonna think about the next time you get a breakaway. <laughs> like, I don't want no fast break. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like, know wait, if I want a breakaway. Take the like, ball down when yeah. you get it. Take the ball down. <laughs> that was one thing I noticed. <laughs> they they hitting on them, on the fast break opportunities too. It ain't no soft foul. Love I it, know love we it. know Kobe could have played in that league for sure. Oh yeah, that's why I mean, that's why Kobe yeah. thrived in in the FIBA game. Hey, and I, I think to that question of like the more physicality, I think it's more so just because they're gearing up for playoffs. Like I think they're getting us ready for to play in that atmosphere and, and them not calling the cheap ticky tack fouls. They're going to let us actually play in the playoffs. Um, so everybody that's getting these little quick draw fouls or, you know, running into the defenders, I think they're going to start slowly limiting that. And, uh, you know, get back to, you know, just letting us play. All right, so our last question, it's coming from Clevita, and she says that I know when I go to the games, I can hear what rivalry fans say loud and clear. So, P, she wants to know if you have ever heard fans courtside during your games. Yeah and no. Yeah and no. Um, Like, you definitely hear what people say in courtside. But it's like, as soon as you process what they just said, it's like, you already like going down the court and getting ready for the next play or like, so like it just happens so quick. And then sometimes you're on the court and you're just like, you just blacked out. Like, it's not here. You don't hear shit. You don't know what, you don't like, the only thing that matters at that point is just what's what's within that rectangle. And I don't, I don't hear shit. I don't see shit. It's just, I'm locked in. But I do know one thing he do do. Soon as the game is over, he always go to mama and daddy. You gotta acknowledge First moms day, and pops. I don't care who if, if, if who there. He always go to mama and daddy, and then he'll come if the, if he see you after the game still in your little spot. He might come say what up to you, Bunky. Yeah, and that's about it. But majority of the time, he might have a little little ball or jersey and give it to a year. Yeah. And he about a year. Yeah, you dig? I Jackie do, but goes. like you, I, I gotta acknowledge like my parents. Like it's 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 so cool to me that I can go over there and I can hug my parents. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that shit, it, it never gets old. It's it's so cool to me that I can do that. I tell I tell whoever's sitting with me all the time, I'll be like, watch, Pete, soon as the game, I don't care if the camera's finna talk, watch what he do first. Watch what he do first. 
do. You go yeah, right to Pop yeah. Shabbat every that's, that's, time. That's when Jackie that's runs around, gets behind him, just so gets it's behind, like yeah. next up. I do want to make a public <laughs> announcement. <laughs> okay, now that you brought up that subject, I do want to make a public announcement. Please give me space when I go and see my parents. Please, please, please. It was getting, it's starting to get chaotic with everyone starting to go over there. My mom is has a disability, so if you knock my mom over, it will be problems. Okay, please give us space when I go to see my parents. I, I gotta, I gotta throw that out there because it's starting to get a little too hectic. They had people putting their babies, putting their kids over, over where my mom seats on those those seats. Like they mm. had people throwing their kids over, and like I'm like, bro, what is y'all doing? Like that's a lot. It's, it's, it's becoming to be yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's it's starting to be a lot. Like a jersey, but a full. Oh, baby. They're putting their babies over, like <laughs> well, propping them you over. See, you see what they done did? They done messed it up for themselves. They now did. It's gonna be extra security. It, it will be. That section will over be over there. And what you, you know, so hey, hey. I love the fan engagement. <laughs> I, I, I love the fan engagement, but my hey, priority to is to go see my parents with them. and make sure that they're good. As y'all see, every time I, I make sure she gets on her her chair yep. and and gets carted out correctly and taken care of. So maybe we could get Jackie like a seat behind them. And I, that's like I take Jack. care of mom and pops every game. Yeah, I already know. <laughs> y'all can have y'all. Y'all both no, can baby. have y'all hair out. You and, Me and pops. pops. Pops gonna have probably had a ponytail. <laughs> pops don't like getting his hair braided too much. He told me he like the he uh, like the ponytail. <laughs> that's funny. I'm sure there have. I I can't think of none that come to mind. But I'm I mean I'm sure there there's been times where I was like. You know that, that that okay that was funny. You done played in that, every that, arena. that gives me yeah. uh like oh okay I, I see you. You done played in every arena. I know. Somebody. There, there's been there's been some yeah. There's been some funny moments for sure. I can't think of none. I've I've I remember more so times where you know people got out of line more so than mm. said some some funny shit. I I think because fact of the matter is like they say a lot of more funny shit and more positive shit and. Like shit that was like, oh, okay, that's actually like I, I, I see you. That was funny. They, they say that more. They do that more than the the bad times. So I think I'm just wrapped on those bad times. I think I got Aaron. I think it was Aaron. It could have been Drew, but we were sitting on like the second row, and I was uh, th there was a foul call, and they were complaining to the ref, and I was just like, Aaron, stop crying like a baby. You know, and he turned around and then he sees me and I'm just like yeah, laughing yeah. at him. I'm like, oh, okay, my bad, my bad. So. All right, fellas. Well, that's a wrap on the episode. Great episode with you guys. I thought we had good time Postman P. We had Tyrese come through and bless mm -hmm. us once again. And uh, we want to appreciate y'all. Thank the fans for watching. Stay tuned. Podcast P. Yeah, Positive yeah. vibes only. <laughs> yeah, yeah.